Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Assembly Lines Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Torrance, and today we're going to take a look at the Mockingboard D1A card and see if we can improve the sound on our Apple IIe. So let's get started. So here's the Mockingboard V1A sound card that we're going to install in our Apple IIe. Uh, this board is uh, was designed by Tom Arnold and it's available from Ultimate Micro. Um, it's basically a clone of the original Mockingboard uh, with a few modifications and enhancements. Uh, so just like the original board, it's got the two um, AY3 sound chips. Uh, each one of those is controlled by a 6522. Um, which is just the interface adapter between the uh, sound chips and the uh, Apple II uh, bus. And for modifications, uh, it actually it has a 3.5mm uh, stereo jack um, to connect to modern sound systems instead of the old RCA jacks. And it also has an input for the uh, Apple II computer sound. So you can actually plug the um, a cable, it comes with a cable that you can plug from the uh, Apple II's logic board sound output uh, instead of that cable going to the um, the speaker inside the Apple II it can actually go to the uh, mocking board so that the Apple II, the regular Apple II sounds will also go through the uh, the mocking board and come out the stereo jack um, so you can see the board layout is really nice it's really well designed uh, looks really good uh, Tom Arnold did a great job on the layout um, there were a couple issues um, with the uh, the cloning and one of which had to do with the uh, left and right channels um, and the other one had to do with the uh, the input from the Apple II but I'll get to those um, after we actually install it and I can talk about uh, some of the fixes for those. So one thing I wanted to do was actually be able to install this in the Apple II with a set of speakers actually embedded inside the uh, inside the computer. I didn't want to have an extra set of desktop speakers on the outside uh, just to avoid cluttering out my desk. Uh, so what I did is I actually put together, I got a couple um, 8 ohm speakers, so these are essentially identical to the ones that are inside um, the Apple II Plus 2E. Um, so I got two speakers and then I just wired them together um, into using this just this simple wiring harness. Um, and I just mounted them inside this kind of block of uh, like a wood just to provide some sort of uh, kind of some sort of speaker enclosure and I'm planning on actually just mounting this inside the Apple IIe uh, kind of face down so that the speakers go out through the vents in the bottom um, but yet you'll still get some sort of stereo sound effect so to attach this to the mocking board I also created a uh, cable which is just a uh, 3.5 millimeter stereo jack on one end and then on the other end um, is a little four pin adapter to plug into my wiring harness. So the two outer pins are ground and the two inner pins um, are for the left and right channel and I just marked on there so I would know which one was which uh, so it says left and right. So all we need to do is mount this into the uh, Apple IIe, plug this into the uh, mocking board and then we can fire it up and see how it sounds. Okay, so we've got the Mockingboard V1A installed in our Apple IIe. Uh, you can see that I've got my 3.5 millimeter audio cable plugged in. That uh, runs around the front of the computer to where I have my uh, speakers that I built. Uh, the Mockingboard comes with 2.5 watt amplifiers on board, um, which is enough to power these 8 ohm speakers. Uh, but you could also plug it into um, any sort of stereo amplifier that uses a 3.5 millimeter uh, audio jack. I've also got the uh, cable that comes with it plugged in from the motherboard on the uh, Apple IIe over to the Mockingboard. So this way any system sounds that the Apple generates uh, will also go through the Mockingboard itself. Okay, first I'll go ahead and fire up the uh, Apple IIe itself with no disc in it. Uh, just to prove that the uh, System sounds are coming through the speakers. Okay, so you can hear that. Uh, now I'll put in my copy of uh, Will Harvey's music construction set. And this will go ahead and automatically load some tunes uh, to play. 
and it should use both channels on the um, on the mocking board. So it's a good test to make sure that both channels are actually working uh, and that they sound correct. Uh, okay, so there's there's the sound, and you can see it's got uh, two channels there. So the one bug I was mentioning, um, the left and right, uh, the left and right channels are actually reversed, and this is just due to a mistake uh, from about 10 years ago where somebody was cloning the mocking board and just reversed the uh, left and right channels, um, and then that mistake has just been copied in all of the clones since then. Um, and so it's easy to fix if you want to do it yourself, and I'll show you how to do that in. Uh, the next video. Uh, the other problem is the input from the um, computer itself from the uh, Apple II motherboard. It's a mono input and that actually muddies the uh, the two channels and so it actually um, if, you, if you leave it the way it is, the way it ships, um, it actually mixes the two channels together so you don't get nice clear uh, channel separation. And again that's an easy fix. I can demonstrate it um, in the next episode. But let's go ahead and now we'll try game. So the mocking board was used in about 30 games to great effect and I should actually point out that so we're, we're going to load up Ultima right now. Um, if you have any sort of Apple II including an Apple II, 2 Plus, 2E, even a 2GS um, you needed the mocking board for a lot of games. Um, actually for the 2GS it's interesting even though it has the nice sound chip in it uh, games like Ultima 4 won't make use of that sound chip. Um, so you actually do need the mocking board if you want to hear the, uh, uh, the, the stereo sound from, uh, from games like Ultima. So we're going to go ahead and activate the mocking board. Uh, we have one mocking board. Uh, it's the uh, mocking board C and it is in slot number 4. And this should go ahead and just start the, uh, the mocking board music. Uh, let's see, let's return to the view. Um, so there it is. It sounds beautiful. Um, so you can go ahead and um, the Mockingboard V1A is available from Ultimate Micro. I'll have the link in the show notes. Uh, it's well worth the money. Um, there's just a few minor um, corrections that need to be made. And I'll show you how to make those corrections in the next episode. Uh, so thanks for watching.